Hello and welcome to the third week of the Free Motion Challenge Quilting Along Flora and Foliage, where we're learning designs that are nature inspired. We've touched on wood grain, we've learned leaves, and now we're gonna get a little floral with our quilting. I'm gonna show you how to create a flower meander that adds beautiful texture to your quilt, and bonus, it's one of the easiest quilting designs to learn. Then I'm gonna show you some different variations you can create from echoing to adding wavy lines to even creating a serpentine type flower. I'm gonna demonstrate it on a sewing machine and a long arm, so let's get to it. To quilt the flower motif, I'm gonna start by quilting a little swirl. Now I don't want the swirl to be too large or too spread out, just a nice little curl about the size of a quarter. Now once I get towards the inside of my swirl, I'm gonna work my way back around quilting a row of petals. These petals will be like little arc shapes. And I'm gonna quilt them until I get back to where I started. And there I have the first part of my flower meander. The size of these petals are what is gonna determine the density of my design. So I need to decide how big or how small I wanna quilt them. If I want it to be a nice big all over, I'll make them about an inch big. If I want it to be a little bit more dense, a little bit more of a filler, I can shrink them down even to like a half of an inch or a quarter of an inch. After I quilted that first row of petals, it's time to add my next row. So from this point, I'm just gonna swing out and quilt another row of the petals in the same size. Again, stopping when I run out of room. Now, one thing I wanna point out about this second row is that it's not necessarily touching the row before it. One tendency that newer quilters seem to have is we wanna make that second row of arcs land on the middle of the one before. And what'll happen is they'll start growing bigger and bigger, and that's not what we want. We wanna keep them all the nice same size so that we have that consistent texture. Now I can add as many or as few rows of petals as I want. That's not gonna change the density of the design. So I think I'm gonna add another row and then we'll see how to add another flower. Once you decide that your flower is big enough that you don't wanna add any more rows, I'm gonna quilt a partial row and then branch off. And then once I'm ready, I'm gonna quilt another little curl and repeat those steps to create the flower. Once I run out of room or I can't go any further, I'm gonna stop and then come back and add my next row. And there I have two lovely flowers. So well, let's add another one and then we'll talk about how to fill in the gaps between them. Just like every other design we've learned during this challenge, I wanna make sure that I don't leave any gaps in between my flowers. So if I find that I have an area that I need to fill in, such as a space between these flowers, I'm gonna keep quilting those petals to fill it in and then move on to my next flower. Remember, it doesn't matter what you put in that gap as long as you fill it in. As we start adding these flowers and filling in this area, you're not gonna see the individual flowers anymore. You're just gonna see that beautiful overall texture. And what will really help make that happen is making sure that all the gaps are filled in. Now, as I'm moving in between those petals, I wanna create a nice sharp point. So I almost kind of think of it like a ping pong ball, where I'm bouncing in and directly back out. That momentum is gonna help give me that nice sharp point. However, if you're newer to machine quilting, you might end up with something that looks more like a loop in between those petals. If you end up with loops, it could mean that you don't have as much control as you're coming in and out of that point. But here's the good news, if you do it once, that's a mistake. If you do it more than once, it's a design choice. So if you have loops in between your petals, just keep doing them and it's your new variation. And just like all the other designs we learned on this custom panel designed for the challenge, as we start to approach those pointy parts of the design, we're gonna try to keep the designs the same size, but use echoing and traveling to fill in the area and get back out. Now let's talk through the most common issue that people face when quilting this design. If you remember, when we're starting our flower, I want a nice small curl. I don't want it very big and I don't want it very long. Well, let me show you the reason why. Let's say I make something like this. It's like an elongated swirl and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, it's just not gonna work great for what we're wanting to do. When we move on to the next step is when we're gonna see where this can kind of pose a problem. If you remember, when I get to the center, I'm gonna work my way back out, adding those petals until I get to the end. The problem is, is as I start to work my way around, I'm gonna have this weird kind of gap on the other side of the swirl. If this happens to you, just add more petals and keep going until you fill in that gap before you move on. Even if it looks a little different from the rest of them, when you're all finished, all you're gonna see is that beautiful overall texture. And if you find yourself stuck, just use traveling to get out, add more petals, and then fill in any of those gaps. 
and you can add those petals around flowers that you've just quilted, flowers that you've previously quilted. They could just be some art shapes that you're using to fill in the gap. It doesn't matter, just fill that area in and move on. And what I love about this design is it's gonna add a beautiful, florally, feminine look to your quilt without being overly ornate and detailed. Now that we've seen how to quilt the flower meander on a sewing machine, let's see how to create a echoed version on the long arm. I'm still gonna start out with my little curl. I'm still gonna add my petals around it. Except before I move on to my next one, I'm gonna echo the petals I've just quilted. But once I finish echoing those, I can swing up and do my next row, just like we did on the sewing machine. Then echoing it before we move on. These echoed flowers are really gonna draw attention to that particular flower. Instead of seeing the overall texture, these echoed flowers are really gonna pull attention to themselves. That little bit of echoing just helps kinda highlight that shape and really makes it look beautiful. But it's gonna take a little bit longer than the flower meander, so make sure you do this in areas of your quilt that you can actually see it. Another thing that will help you get the best results is make sure that there's enough difference between the spacing of your echo lines and the size of your petals. For instance, if you're quilting your petals so that they're half an inch big, use a quarter inch spacing for the echoing. This contrast in the spacing will make sure that it looks like an echo and not just like another line of petals. Don't worry if your flower ends on a line of echoes or a line of petals, that doesn't matter. Just whenever you're ready to build off of that and add another flower, go for it. Now I'm using this contrasting thread so that you can really see what I'm doing, but this design really shines when the thread color matches the quilt top. You can also use this idea of the flower design to highlight a certain portion of your block. Instead of quilting it so that it wraps around a swirl, you can quilt it so that it wraps around a side of your block. I can start by quilting my row of arcs, echoing them, and then jumping back up to quilt the next row. What this is gonna do is form a kind of scalloped echoing, and it's really gonna help highlight that portion of the quilt. I love to do this with thinner sashings or borders, or in quilts like this with irregular shapes where I wanna draw attention towards the center. For a fun, funky, more organic look for your quilting, you can replace that row of petals with a wavy line to make a design that goes together really fast. It's gonna start out the same way as the flower meander with a nice little curl. The only difference is instead of adding that row of petals, I'm gonna quilt a wavy line that works its way outside back to where I started. And I'm gonna add as many of those echoes as I want. The trick is though, I want the wavy lines to be different from each other. I don't want them to look like they're trying to echo each other. I am gonna try to keep the spacing between those lines somewhat consistent, however. That's gonna help keep the design the same density throughout the whole quilt. I'm gonna quilt a partial row just to get where I need to add my next flower, quilt my curl, and continue on. This design is gonna to go together much faster than the flower meander since I don't have all those changes of direction. So I would use this on a quilt with busier fabric or maybe a novelty quilt or a children's quilt, just because it has that fun, funky look. Or if I was doing the flower meander over the whole quilt and there were portions of the quilt that were really busy and you couldn't really see it, I might switch to this because it looks kind of similar, but it's a lot faster. It might not be a design you want to use all the time, but it definitely looks cool on some quilts. Now, there's another flower design I'm gonna show you that is a new favorite of mine. It's not difficult, it just takes a little bit more planning ahead. It consists of serpentine lines of different shapes to give this flower a fun, wonky feel. If you're newer to machine quilting, start off with the regular flower meander, and then as you feel more comfortable, definitely progress to this one. My first move is going to be a serpentine line that kind of works its way out into space. It's gonna curve out and back, and wherever that line ends is gonna be the center of my flower. Now I'm gonna quilt a, another serpentine line that's the same shape as the first one. I'm gonna quilt it so that it swings out a bit, but comes back and touches the first one I quilted. Now I'm gonna travel along till I get past the highest part of that serpentine line and quilt another one that goes and extends towards the center. 
and then quilt another one. So they're kind of in groups of two. It's gonna go out and then come back, trying to make its way back to the center. Now here's where a little bit of thought comes into play. I love the idea of making some of the petals longer and some of them shorter. So as I'm working my way around, the ones on the bottom will be shorter and wider. Of course, you can make them all more similar in size if you like that idea. And there I have that first flower. Now sometimes it works out to where I end up in the center, and sometimes it works out to where I end up on the outside. Either one is fine. If I end up in the center, I'm just gonna travel along one of those lines to get to the outside edge. Now I have an option here. I can quilt my flowers so that they're all jammed together, making that all over meander kind of effect. Since this one takes a little bit longer and this one has a little bit more thought into it, I wanna really make it show up a little bit more. So I'm gonna use a filler, such as the swirls, to work my way around that flower to get to the next area where I wanna add my next flower. Once you get to an area where you decide you wanna add another flower, I'm gonna stop and repeat those steps, quilting that serpentine line that extends out into the space to find the center of my flower, and then quilting those serpentine lines around until I fill it all in. And there's my next funky flower. If I'm being honest, making those petals different sizes helps kind of hide any mistakes I may or may not have made. But once I have that flower done, now it's time to fill in any gaps with that filler and then add my next flower whenever I'm ready. Now this design is gonna take a lot longer than the other flower meander. So I wanna make sure I'm using this in areas that I wanna draw attention to or on quilts for people that I really love. Now it's your turn. If you're quilting along with me on the custom panel designed for this challenge, fill in the area highlighted in red with the quilting designs of your choice. You can try all of the different flower meanders or you can group them together and just quilt one design over all of it. And don't forget, you can download my free quilting diagrams with pictures and tips on how to quilt the design. Or if you need a little bit more help, you can get the expanded resource with even more pictures and even more tips. Well, I'll see you next week where we'll learn how to quilt the pebbles design. Until then, happy quilting.